Hi guys, here we are to tune this NA Honda Civic. Let's check what options we have in the ECU tuner. The data logger is the main feature for our tune today. What we need are logs for RPMU, MAP, which is shortcut for manifold absolute pressure, AFR, which is shortcut for air fuel ratio, and TPS, which is shortcut for throttle position sensor. The road dyno is also important because it will show us how successful our modifications are. Don't forget to first find the correct dyno preload value for your current horsepower. You can adjust the electric fan start temperature. No one wants to overheat the engine. IAT maps are an important part of EICU tuning. Firstly, we need to define the values for the charge temp map. In the help sheet, it is indicated that charge temperature is relevant to coolant temperature when the value is zero and relevant to IAT when the value is 100. Therefore, low RPM values should be set low, near zero, because the airflow speed at low RPM is also low and the temperature of the air entering the engine is heated by the engine parts. As the RPM and injector duty cycle increase, the relevance of charge temperature to the intake air temperature also rises. The IAT fuel correction map is a simple correction map to enrich or lean your AFR based on the air temperature entering your engine combustion chamber. Warmer air has lower density compared to cooler air and as the temperature increases, the air density decreases. But therefore, we need to enrich the AFR below 50 degrees Celsius and lean it above that threshold. The air fuel ratio map and ignition timing map are set to zero. Let's keep them that way. Okay, let's try our first dyno run and gather some reference numbers. Amazing 106 horsepower. Now let's check data logger. This is our dyno run. You can see when it starts in bottom gray throttle position sensor log. Okay, now the fun begins. Let's add some power with advanced ignition timing. Open the diagnostic port, bypass the ELIGN hole, and adjust the camshaft position sensor. To start, we can try a four degree advance. Erase the last dyno run and push the pedal to the metal. Hopefully, the NOx sensors won't cut power. Great, we can see some power increase without hitting knock. Open the data logger and check the last run. The AFR log is not looking great and flat, but we will equalize it later. Now, let's try to add more timing and get even better HP numbers. Numbers are rising, which is good. Now, you can try advancing even more timing, but let's focus on equalizing the AFRR. 
we know that the maximum power is somewhere between 12.512.8 AFR. Open the diagnostic port again and bypass EFP. Now, we can adjust our fuel pressure on the fuel pressure regulator. It is set to two bars at idle RPM. To enrich the AFRR, we raise the pressure to 2.6 bars and see what happens. You can see that we achieve much better numbers. Let's check data logger. Thirteen point one. I think we can add some more fuel pressure with our fuel regulator. If our dyno graph shows oscillations in the peak power band like this, we need to add some dyno preload value. Slowly but surely, we are reaching our goal, which is to flatten the curve at a value of 12.8 AFR. We can see that the last increase in fuel pressure gave us a maximum AFR of 12.5 at 6,150 RPM. This will be our baseline to tune the AFR map from this point. The dyno graph doesn't look right, so we need to add dyno preload value again until it stops oscillating. With changing power, it's always necessary to fine-tune the dyno preload value. The dyno graph looks great finally, but I forgot to unpause the data logger, so I need to run it again. What we need to realize is that it's not just about the maximum engine power, but about achieving the highest power across the entire RPM range. We can see in our data logger that the AFR from about 5,700 RPM to redline is 13, which can be slightly more tuned, but is generally correct. On the other hand, we can definitely gain some horsepower in the mid-range RPM from 4,400 to 5,500, Open the AFR map and add some values based on our data logger. It's a simple 8x8 map where the vertical axis represents engine RPM values and the horizontal axis represents pressure in the intake manifold MAPE, which in our case equals atmospheric pressure since this Civic is currently naturally aspirated without a turbocharger or supercharger. To flatten the curve, we need to add some values from low RPM where AFR is 14, until 4,400 RPM, where AFR is ideally 12.8. Additionally, we need to decrease some values from 4,400 to 5,500 RPM, where we have a richer AFR than necessary. You can also see on the data logger that our map sensor is mostly showing 0.21 bar of boost at full throttle. 
That's why we need to adjust values around 100 kilopascal in our AFR map A, which is zero bar of boost or atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's do our last dino run for today, hopefully. Check this out, guys. Finally, the AFR log looks pretty good and stays flat around 12.8. Thanks for watching.